If everything I stand on ceases, I fall into your arms, Lord Jesus. You are the Thank you very much, Speaker. As the only visually impaired senator in the House, it was difficult for me to know if I would catch your eye, but I'm glad that I have. And I thank you for the opportunity to also, with some of my colleagues, oppose this motion. Mr. Speaker, I've heard a colleague use the book of Nehemiah to prosecute her support of this motion. But what exactly did Nehemiah say when he was urged to retreat? What was Nehemiah's decision when people were trying to distract him from his work? Mr. Speaker, Nehemiah said, I am doing a good work and I cannot come down. And that's what Gen Z are also saying to the executive and to members of parliament, that they are doing a good work, standing up, speaking for themselves and for their colleague, young, young men and women who are out in the streets, Mr. Speaker, and they cannot come down. And neither should we in this Senate. How can we go on a recess? Why are we going on a recess? We have just come from a three-week recess period, Speaker. Why do we need two more weeks to reflect? This is a house of reflection, and we have to do it while we're sitting in these seats and when we're speaking in these microphones. That's what we're here to do. Parliament stands to represent its people. Parliament, Mr. Speaker, does not close to run away from its people. I want to urge and persuade those who have not spoken yet to also concur in opposing this motion, not because of disrespect, but because of respect for the young men and women who have lost lives, who are now muted because they cannot speak due to yesterday's horrifying scenes. We can't go home. Are we trying to say that renovations of windows and offices are more important than speaking for bloodshed and lives lost yesterday? We cannot, Mr. Speaker. And I, as a young person, as the first young person speaking to this motion, as a youth in this house, I am speaking for the youth who are outside of this house. We cannot go on a recess. It is wrong. And it would be completely insensitive to do so. Mr. Speaker, darkness fears democracy. I rarely wake up in the morning wishing for my eyesight to be restored. But what a sight to be able to behold. This last week had me aching with desire to see my fellow youth in the most spectacular display of patriotism, camaraderie, and putting up a first-rate masterclass on demanding that governments be held to account for the entire world to see. And yes, they have seen. But unity, Mr. Speaker, has been violently gunned down in the streets, not by men, but by monsters who have no concern for human life. Although this government has demonstrated that lifeless Kenyan bodies are not to take precedence over their punitive finance bill, young Kenyans have looked their oppressor dead in the eye and shown them that when it comes down to the wire, there are only two times to be brave, when you feel like it and when you don't. My profound disappointment to the current government and its forceful assault on uh, crowds of innocent youth speaker by its nefarious police officers who have gone rogue on unarmed young citizens peacefully exercising their constitutional right towards an uncaring, a corrupt, and wasteful government in their eyes that has turned its back on them cannot be emphasized enough, speaker. The brute force used against young unarmed protesters reveals the operating system built into the fabric of today's government. And when they kill us, Speaker, they're killing themselves. The arrogance from some of these top government officials has been outrageously condescending to young people, disgusting and reminiscent of narcissistic abuse. You call us wankers and clueless children of plunderers. Then you say you're proud of us for making our voices heard peacefully. Then abduct defenseless children using state machinery 
and escalate a peaceful demonstration of young people with phones, twigs, and water bottles in their hands into barbaric scenes of bloodshed. Young people, Mr. Speaker, were not out to kill. In fact, I was here on this premises yesterday when everything set off. And whilst I was separated from, separated from my security guard, Mr. Speaker, I also saw another member of parliament from the National Assembly who is a wheelchair user, who voted yes to the finance bill, also having been separated from his team and his aides and bodyguard. He was stranded, Mr. Speaker, couldn't run, couldn't hide in his wheelchair. And you know what happened when those kids entered this premises? Three young boys saw this member of parliament who voted yes for the finance bill, and instead of reprimanding him, instead of reading him their, their, their minds, giving them a piece of their minds, you know what they did? They actually carried this member of parliament in his wheelchair to the tunnel so that he can go and seek refuge across in Bunge Towers. And then the three boys ran back and joined their fellow comrades. That's what happened. These kids don't operate in mendacity, Mr. Speaker. They are moral youth who are just trying to get their voices heard. So this peddling of a message or narrative that these youth are evil, they are killers and criminals, they're not. That is completely misguided and untrue. Why don't these policemen punch in their own weight class, Mr. Speaker? That's my question. I've been asking myself, would they come into parliament and try and abduct or take on